All right, welcome to part two of our truss work. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now and start at joint C in our truss, and so far this is the progress we've made so far. We know the value of AD, and we know the value of AB, and the values themselves are not indicated on this diagram, but they are indicated back at the end of part two. So if you uh, are downloading this first, you might wanna go back and look at part one to get the actual values uh, that you'll need for these two, uh, these two members. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on joint C. So we're gonna go ahead and grab joint C. Here's joint C, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, Copy this, and let's see if let's see if I can paste it in the right direct right spot this time. Let's see, let's see if it just drops it over on the right side. Oh, okay, so it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. But let's go ahead and adjust. We can kind of work with that. All right. So here's our free body diagram. It's over here, and this time, of course, on the paper, you'll sketch it right about here. Okay, so no big deal. All right, so we got that. Now let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's find our. Uh, Expressions, okay. So just like last time, right? CE, this is CE right here, okay? CE, and uh, this is CB, right? So here's CE, here's CB, right? So just like last time, we're gonna express these just in trig terms, okay? We're not gonna worry about substituting and getting actual values, okay? We're just gonna write CE cosine 45, right? And then here, we're gonna write CE sine 45. Also notice that uh, if you, for those of you really good at trig, you'll know that cosine 45 and sine 45 have the same value. Um, so you know, in case you needed to know that, or didn't notice that before. But anyway, those were the boxes we get there. We're gonna fill those two numbers in, and let's go ahead and move on to the next, uh, the next box. So we're here. What do we have to do? We have to write the forces in the x direction and the forces in the y direction. Well, there's two for each, right? So the forces in the x direction are uh, BC, right? And then there's also the component of the x component of b uh, of d uh, of cd excuse me cd uh, cdx right uh, or was it I'm sorry you know what it's not it's uh, it's 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 uh, <laughs> cex my fault okay ce and I keep doing this up here come on scrap it that c come on it doesn't really like that okay you know what we'll just try it again c capital c now it changed the color on me. Oh boy! All right, and uh, that's C E subscript X. All right, he did it. Look at that. Let's go ahead and type the other one too while we're at it. C E subscript Y for the Y direction, right? And then the only other force that acts in the Y direction actually that is that reaction force that we calculated earlier, right? So that's the R C Y. So we have that as well. Okay. So those are the forces at work here. Uh, we're gonna obviously if you if you're kind of getting used to this right now, right? These are unknowns. This is unknown. This is unknown. This is known. So we're gonna start with a y equilibrium equation in the next part. Okay. So that y equilibrium equation, that's a sigma f y equals zero, right? Here's our sigma, right? Here's our sigma. Here's our f y, right? We're getting used to this uh, this by now, right? Start with our equilibrium equation f sub y, and what does it equal? It equals zero. Okay. So not, not no, it doesn't know equals no, equals zero. Okay, substitution. So what do we substitute in? If we're doing y, we're gonna substitute in the y component of CE, right? Which is CE sub y. And then we're gonna do the reaction force, right? And remember, since we don't know what CEY is, we're gonna not make a sign of it. But we do know the reaction force RCY is a positive value. And more importantly, we know that it's 775 pounds. And what does it equal? It equals zero. So that means that CEY, right? That's CE times the cosine, uh, sorry, sine of 45. But again, we mentioned before, it does not matter too much. And that's going to equal negative 775. So when I use my uh, calculator to do, I'm going to have to divide by sine 45 here. Seven, negative 775 divided by sine 45. And that number is negative 1096.02, all right? And again, negative, right? Negative value. So that's going to indicate that we're in compression. So C, right there. So we're going to go to our master diagram, CE. Here's CE. That's going to be in compression. I would take those arrows and point those arrows away, right, from each other. Okay? So back to the truss now. So now we're going to do the X. Now that we have the value for CE, we're going to use that to our advantage to find the value for C, uh, for CE, uh, for using the CEX, I should say, to find CB. Uh, the equation would be negative, uh, sorry, it's negative, sigma fx equals zero, okay? Uh, I'm gonna stop typing that at this point. Hopefully you know what's gonna go in there, right? The substitution is this. CB is in the x direction, right? And the x component, since, it's, since we had to reverse the direction, 
that was down and right. So we're actually going to add 1,096.02, right? And that's going to equal zero, okay? And by the way, that's 1,096.02 times the cosine of 45 because it's the x component, okay? So that doesn't quite fit in all the way, but that's all right. So we simplify that. We'll go ahead and we'll divide, uh, sorry, we'll subtract, right? So it's going to be CB equals negative 1096.02 cosine 45. Why is it negative? Because I had to subtract it over to the other side. So CB equals that. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator uh, and do the cosine 45 times that. And I actually know that that's going to work out to negative 775 pounds. Uh, and then that is also going to indicate that that member is also in compression. All right, so compression there. Of course, now that I look at it, actually, I need to, re I need to change one thing here because CB, right? We know the direction of CB, that's got to be negative. So this is negative, that makes this positive. So I got to change that. I got to make that, this is actually a positive value. And I do apologize for that. I'm going to rewrite that number right there. Uh, that's not going to be compression. So that's going to be, right? So it's easy to make that mistake. And I, I know I said in class to a, a couple of you that, you know, you don't want to put a sign on the unknown member uh, unless you happen to know the direction that it's currently pointing. Right, so in this case, we would want to put that negative CB on there because it is pointing to the left. So I do apologize uh, for any uh, potential confusion that will arise from, uh, from that statement there, but this is in tension, okay? So that's tension, so we go back to our joint FBD, write a T, and now all we have is one, two, three more members to go, right? So four members are solved, three more members to go. All right, so we continue onward and upward. Here's a star, look at that. You guys are stars for doing this. Joint E is our next target. So joint E, here's joint E. Okay, there we go. That one's got a load of 500 pounds. Now we got more information with this, right? So we know that there's information that we're gonna use to our advantage now. Let's go ahead and paste this in. Let's hope it works. And, no, not quite. And it's just gonna put that diagram just anywhere it wants, right? All right, well, we'll have to work with it there, okay? So there's our diagram, 500 pound load. And let's label these joints, uh, label the members, excuse me. This is CE, this is CB, and this is uh, DE, right? And this is DE right here. So let's go ahead and drag that up there so you can see that. All right, cool. So there's our free body. Of course, the free body will go there, but thanks to, you know, the smart board not being so smart, that's okay. Uh, EBY, EBX, same deal here. We can just write, and the angle is 56.3, if I remember correctly, 56.3. So EB sine 56.3 and EB cosine 56.3, right? Okay, so we'll use those to our advantage. Forces in the X direction. This time here, we're just gonna look at this diagram and kind of just type it in here, okay? Forces in the X direction. DE is a force in the X direction. The X component of CB, right? The X component of CB is in the X direction. And uh, so is the X component in CE, of CE, I should say. That's also in the X direction. How about the y direction? The load, 500 pounds, is in the x direction, and more, well, sorry, the y direction, and we would also more appropriate to say that it's negative 500 pounds. Uh, we have CBY, also in the y direction, right? And we also have CEY, also in the y direction, okay? So that's gonna be constant. All right, so those are our forces in the y direction in case we need to reference them, right? Okay, next page. Truck and ladder along here. Static equilibrium. For y, all the forces in the y direction equal nothing, right? So here's our substitution, negative 500 pounds, right? Negative 500 pounds, trying to type that, right? Plus EBY, right? EBY plus, what was the other one? EC, or CE, Y. What does that equal? It equals zero, okay? But we have CE, we have to kind of go back to do it. But if we look back at our in our uh, in our in our notes, we actually have CEY. Okay, we actually have it, and we can write it as CE sine 45. But we have CE, so we can just do that. Okay. Okay. So remember that um, CE was at a 45 degree angle, right? So if I do CE, I could do sine 45, right? And then EBY, we would have sine 56. So we have two different angles at work here, and you know that's okay. All right, so uh, one thing I will do is I will write this. I'll write negative 500. And then also, since CE is 1,096 and the cosine of 45, I, you know, or the sine of 45 would be something I'd be throwing in there as well. Um, if I just punch that in my calculator really quick, I'm going to get 775 for that. 
uh, is positive because it's uh, upward. The sense of the y direction is upward in this in this vector. And then of course, then it's going to be eb times sine 56.3. Okay. So uh, make that substitution. We're going to make that substitution. What is it equal? Of course, it equals zero. I forgot to write that, but here you go. Equals zero. Right. So we know that. Okay. And then uh, we're just going to simplify this, right? So uh, and I forgot the. Uh, no, I didn't forget that. I'm sorry. I remember this. It's 275. 275, and then we're going to subtract that. It's going to be negative 275. So EB is going to equal, EB is going to equal the negative, uh, sorry, positive, no, negative 275. And that's going to be divided by the sine of 56.3. Right? So then, I'm going to hit that in the calculator, and I'm going to get. 331 pounds. Okay, now, unfortunately, 331 pounds, 0.71, of course. Uh, but one thing I just noticed also is, again, EB, right, the y direction EB, it's negative uh, because pointing down, right, so, oops, um, since that's negative, right, that's going to turn this into a positive 275, so I have to apologize once again for uh, small bits of confusion. Um, this particular so make sure it should be that, negative EB sine 56.3. Again, because the sense of the vector is down and to the left. And then we get a positive value indicating tension. So it indicates that we are correct in our direction uh, with that vector. So again, I know that kind of is uh, sort of opposite what we, what we talked about in class. Um, we are going to use the sense of the vector uh, in, uh, we're going to use the sense of the vector to kind of guide the sign that it should be. Um, and it should still work out to see whether compression or tension on uh, this. So this should indicate tension, of course. Okay, so back to our joint FBD. We'll go ahead and draw a tension for EB. So here's our tension uh, mark right there, right? And then I'm also going to use that same knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and find ED now in this next uh, step. So now that I have EB, 331.71, I'm going to use that. That's going to help me find this next thing, which is our X static equilibrium equation. I'm going to type this correctly now this time. Here we go. This is the uh, CE sub X, CE sub X minus DE, right? Because again, now it's pointing to the left. And uh, if I add those two, and then that also includes the, uh, the uh, one I just found as well, which also is to the left. That's going to be uh, BE sub X, okay? And all three of those vectors will add to zero, okay? So we have two bits of unknown, sorry, two bits of known information and one bit of unknown information, that's DE. So in this case, we have a rather large equation we're gonna substitute in here uh, for this particular, uh, this particular configuration. So we have CE, right? CE cosine 45. And then we're gonna, I'm just gonna move some terms if you don't mind. BE cosine 56.3 minus DE equals zero, all right? So to simplify this equation, it actually is best if I add DE here. And so that's gonna mean, and I could just flip it around, I could say DE equals CE cos 45 minus BE cos 56.3, okay? Now since I have CE and I have BE, I'm gonna replace those, uh, those values. Okay, so I've got that uh, equation filled in here. So cosine 45, 331.71, cosine 56.3. So rather large uh, you know, calculation to put in your calculator. But you go ahead and do that and you're going to get, you would get 960.27 over here. And then, but since this is negative DE equals this, we would have to, of course, make this whole thing negative to get our regular value for uh, DE. And notice it does say ED. I like to draw them in alphabetical order, uh, but that's fine. So we're gonna get negative 960.27 and of course that indicates that this member is in compression. Okay, so we got a C there. So here's our C, and then we'll go ahead and drop back to our truss diagram, and there's a C right there. So we have one member to go, ladies and gentlemen, one member to go, and that's right here, this DB. All right, so we're gonna go back to our diagram, back to our diagram, and we're gonna have now a free body diagram, and it wants us to use joint D. Good, I'm glad it wants us to use joint D because joint D has fewer vectors at work and more known information. So here's vector, here's that. Oops, of course I cloned it by accident. Let's try that again. 
All right, let's see here, copy, and then we'll go ahead and go back to our book, and we're gonna paste it, and we're gonna paste it, it's gonna show up right there. Uh, not quite exactly where uh, we wanted it, but that's okay. All right, so at point D, this arrow, oops, I said this arrow should be pointing over there, so it should be something like that, okay. All right, so DE is the one we're looking for, okay? So again, that, that, that diagram goes down here. Um, DB is the one we're looking for, excuse me. So we can kind of write that, and that DB is at 56.3 as well. So that's gonna be DB cosine 56.3, and this is DB or BD, whatever you want, times sine, uh, and I wrote the trig functions backwards, my fault. It's getting late here, sine 56.3. Okay, so we got that. Whew. All right, so again, we can just skip that and write that out, right? Okay, now, last thing to do. Last thing to do. Forces in the x direction, forces in the y direction. I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to have it kind of label, have you label that, basically. There should be three for each, including the load would include in the y direction. Um, but our equation for the uh, equilibrium is to solve for dB, okay? We're going to use the y direction. So what does that equal? Well, we have the load of uh, 1,000 pounds, right? And that's negative 1,000 pounds because it's pointing downward. And we have the Y component of AD, right? The Y component of AD. And we have the Y component of A of DB, okay? And we'll use, we'll just, use just for consistency, we'll use theirs, okay? And uh, we have AD, right? If we go back and kind of look and see what AB, wait, what AD is, we know that that's a 45 degree angle, and AD, uh, if my memory serves correctly, is, so 1378.86 uh, was the value of AD, so that was negative 1,000, plus, uh, right, I forgot the number, I gotta go back, 1378.86, that's pointing up and right, so we're gonna keep that positive, cosine 45, and then our DB sine, not, not equals, plus DB sine 56.3, it's off the video, I'll just get that back in there for a second, and that's gonna equal zero, let me drag that whole thing in here, I'm gonna put it down here actually, uh, understand we're looking at that right now, right? So then we're gonna solve this, right? So we have this, this number right here is gonna work out to 975, and this is negative 1,000 here, so 975, and one negative 1,000 is gonna be just a whopping negative 25 pounds, right? So we add that over, okay, and that dB is going to be, let me make sure I did that right, and just to make sure, yeah, that's right. That's right. I did that right. So that's negative 25 pounds plus dB sine 56.3. That means dB sine 56.3 is going to equal the uh, positive 25 pounds, right? Because when we, make, when we calculate this, remember this number right here works out to be 975. And we add the 1,000 and the 975, we get 25. Um, so we have that. Uh, and like we would get negative 25, but then we would add it, and then we'd have positive 25. So that means dB is going to equal the quotient of 25 and sine 56.3. All right, that little slash means division there. And if we hit that in our calculator, we're going to get 30 pounds. Let me just double check the sign here, make sure. Yeah, so yeah, dB is uh, is pointing uh, downward, so we're going to make that negative. So uh, because that's negative, that means that our answer is going to become negative. So it's going to be negative 30 pounds uh, for dB. Okay, so negative 30 pounds. I'm just going to round that negative 30 pounds. That's fine. We did a lot of work, so it's fine. So that's going to indicate compression. So, but, that, but that, thankfully, is our last member. Okay, so that means that we have our uh, member here in compression. We have that value all set. Okay, and then that's perfect. That's great. Okay, so now what we can do is if we kind of... Uh, have finished this, right? And we update the joint diagram, and we can update and check that out. And just so you can see, since you made it all the way to the end of the video, here is the final truss. Here's the final truss, and what this uh, particular final truss, this is uh, using a program called MD Solids. You can use that, and you can actually solve trusses and by inputting all the trusses and all the details about the loads and the positions of the truss uh, joint points and all that. Uh, it allows you to basically find and solve an entire truss with the click of a button. Uh, so this particular uh, screenshot was from that program. But you can see all the values of the uh, forces as well as the type of force on them. They're all here, so you can check and see that you've got the right numbers. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that step-by-step -step truss. We'll be back on Thursday or Wednesday, uh, as the case may be, for some more fun and games with some more trusses. Have a great evening and a great or a great day. Or both.